Hello, I'm Michael Mills. Welcome to Mount Moco. I first came here in 2005 to look for Swester's Franklin, which hadn't been seen for 50 years. Um, and it's a species dependent on the forest. And when I arrived here, I was shocked to see the state of the forest and um, how quickly the forest seemed to be disappearing. So I've returned with colleagues um, to find out what the causes of this is. And it seems that the largest problem here for the forest is the small community of Conjonde, um, which utilizes the resources of the forest. Um, so in order to protect this forest, which is highly threatened in Angola, um, there are only 85 hectares on this mountain, which is the largest known patch in the country. Um, so in order to protect this forest, I've, I've brought colleagues to come and study other groups of animals. Um, we have people trapping rodents, um, to study them. I've done extensive bird surveys. We have botanists with us on this trip collecting plants from different parts of the mountain. Um, and all this information is being used to motivate for this to become a protected area. Um, at the same time though it's very important to engage the community here who are utilizing these resources. And so we're working with the community to try and reduce their impacts on the forest. We just started a small nursery growing some of the forest trees um, and we're training four young people from the village to grow these trees um, which eventually will be used in forest rehabilitation. So in the future I hope that we will have more extensive forest here, a protected area and of course being the highest peak in the country this will always be a great tourist attraction. My goal in the project is mostly to use education as a solution to this big problem that is the disappearance of the African Afromontane forest, which is somehow connected to some endemic bird species. My project included last year's inventory of the basic needs of the local population and now we are proposing some ideas to improve mostly the use of wood as fuel from the population like these efficient stoves and also the tree nursery. <laughs> We will also talk with a local teacher about which educational materials have been used to transmit to students the relevance of this forest. Um, here in Marmoka we've got very little Afromontane forest left, it's the last remaining fragments in Angola. So there's precious little forest left here. Uh, we're helping the local villagers to establish a little nursery in order to plant trees back into the wild. Hopefully this will help the forest re-establish and uh, provide a sustainable uh, resource for them. The local villagers utilize the wood for fuel and for building. And unfortunately with fire, regular fires, the forest, the Afromontane forest is being uh, eaten away at the edges and now there's very little of it left. We are working in the Mount Moku area trying to develop an ecotourism project. For us it's a big relief when we realize that there are institutions concerned with protection of biodiversity. So we want to give our contribution in the relevant protection of nature, not only locally or nationally, but also internationally. And we also want to leave a tip for all the Angolans so that they can preserve all the forests since the survival of mankind depends upon them.
I want to see if ecotourism is a possible uh, conservation strategy to go for the Afro Montan forest in Mount Moko. And for this, I'm making a, a series of of interviews and collecting different data. For example, for interviews, I want to know uh, which are the biodiversity threats that the population of Kanjonde, the village around Mount Moko, uh, have towards the forest. For example, if they hunt any animal, which animals they hunt. If they go to collect wood, where do they go? If they go to the Miombo or to the forest. And I also want to see if an ecotourist project will be able to develop, to improve, uh, the social and economical, uh, economical status of the village. And for example, for that part, uh, I'm gathering information about the products they, they, they produce and sell in the market and the things they usually buy in the market. For this reason, we are right now in the market of Palombo, trying to find out prices of different products such as potato, uh, beans that are the things that usually can, can join the villagers sell, as well as the things that they usually buy as salt, soap, oil and so on. Este habitat está restrito às montanhas de, de África. This habitat is only found in the African mountains, and my role here is to try to understand when this habitat became so restricted to these moist and cold places. To do this, I'm using birds as my model. This is a paradise flycatcher. The name says it all. Several of these birds can be found only in the African mountains. So we find some birds in this forest that we can't find nearby on the plain. But we can find them 3,000 kilometers away, in the mountains of Cameroon or Tanzania. Using genetic techniques, by extracting small blood samples, we can assess how long these species have been separated. It's interesting that here we can find the whole evolutionary process. There are some good flying species like pigeons that we find in the different mountain ranges without much differentiation. There are also some other species that already show some differences in size or color and that are classified as endemic subspecies. And finally, at the end of the process, we find species that have become so differentiated through isolation that they have turned into new species. Here in Mount Moku there are several of these. That's my job, using genetic techniques and also biometrics to find out when these forests became isolated. So my role in this project was first to make a survey on the flora of this region and also to help in the bird surveys. Afterwards, working on the establishment of a tree nursery in which the local population can take part, so that in the future we can reforest this area. This place is special because of its, it is called the, one can see it as a botanical hotspot and because of its great diversity of plant species, there are three vegetation regions which uh, uh, overlap here and one of them are grassland, the other is Miombo and uh, then the Afro-temperate forest. The Afro-temperate forest is the uh, uh, smallest of the lot and the most threatened and it's got many species which are endemic and only confined to these forests. It also has this link with the Cape flora. And the Miombo, again, on the other hand, is more widespread over Africa and so is the grasslands. But the grasslands of uh, uh, Mount Moku are special because they harbor many, many endemics. And we have, uh, in the past three or four days, we have explored this mountain and found many, many interesting plants of which we don't know the names. Earlier this year I was searching on Google Earth, um, all areas above 2,000 meters in Angola for forest and I came across an area um, on Mount Number which appeared to have much larger tracts of forest. 
and this is where we are right now, confirming that the habitat that looked like forest is indeed Afromontane forest. It's very rich in bird species. It has, in the first day that we've been here, we found all the isolated Afromontane forest species in Angola. From Google Earth it appears that there's approximately 400 hectares of forest as opposed to only 85 at Mount Moko. So this is an incredibly significant find um, and improves the conservation status of these Afromontane forests in Angola very significantly.